And um, but we get the uh, partnership with Sira. Sira is one of our major investor. Uh, so right now we set up our lab at the uh, Sira Hospital, as you can see, actually right here in that building. So if anyone interested in uh, visiting us, like you know, we definitely welcome everyone. So um, like uh, the the host have uh, kindly introduced us. Uh, we are focused. Uh, our company has been more focused in the. Uh, cardiovascular or heart health, um, but also particularly in technology, uh, I'm sorry, cancer technology. But for these particular projects that we actually just started this year, um, we are focused on kidney and heart health together. And actually as, um, you know, this is actually very well known, but somehow it's not being said much, is that kidney and heart disease usually go together. Um, and the reason for that is to think about this, the primary cause of the heart disease is what? Potential, diabetes, smoking. What about the kidney? It's exactly the same thing. So I don't know if it's actually just uh, happened to be the same causes or it just like one, uh, you know, feed each other, but probably both. Anyways, um, so uh, this is a scientist uh, slide, so it's probably not going to be as fancy as we have seen all the year, all the day today. Um, but anyway, um, hopefully uh, it will be um, interesting to you. Um, so we focusing on the patient who have um, chronic artery disease, like, you know, as you may know, like, well, the most dramatic uh, picture of these patients want to have chest pain, heart attack, right? But that's actually a lot of these patients who may not have chest pain yet, but they do have now narrowing of the uh, blood vessels. And that such narrowing or blockage can actually kill patients someday. So we try to prevent that. Also, some patients even have chronic blockages then on top of heart failure that they already have. So the condition is really poor. So the current treatment today is stent angioplasty or you know, balloon, right? A lot of time people call it balloon. It's the same thing, it's just a stent and balloon, like in that tattoo that I put in the middle of the screen. Um, but when we do that, since we actually now, like we don't crack the chest open to do the surgery, we actually just put two catheters into like the whatever, like can be the groin, can be the neck, and then go into the heart. So we need to see it, right? And the way to see it is by X-ray, uh, what they call philosophy. But X-ray cannot distinguish the vessels uh, from the surrounding tissue. The way to do that is we have to have contrast media, like the picture that's showing here. Like, you know, without the contrast media, you would not be able to see all these vessels. Um, so particularly with the patient, we have complex arterial disease. Um, those are, you know, patients have multiple blockages or like where in the area of big vessels or like a more difficult one. So the more complex, the more contrast media that we need. The problem is that the contrast media actually hurt the kidney. It caused the kidney injury. Um, so, uh, so that actually made um, people who have kidney, advanced kidney disease would not be able to go through with this procedure that is that, that is very much needed. You know, so it's kind of like a very bad because like you know, patient who needed most could not have it because, like I said earlier, that usually like you know, well, um, the heart and the kidneys are pathologies or diseases usually go together. Like when I spoke with the uh, cardiologists or doctors, they often said that if one day they uh, consulted with like kidney disease patient, they most likely expect, um, you know, uh, complex lesions. So that's kind of like the, uh, um, you know, we have a technology, we have a treatment that's very effective, but unfortunately the patient that needs that, that, need that treatment the most could not get it because of the complication. So for that reason, that's where our catheter comes in. Because the catheter looks like that. Then it will put inside the heart, which the next slide will show how it works, right? But then the, the idea is that, that this catheter would put right into the heart where the blood returns and then take the blood supply that the blood that be already contaminated with the uh, contrast medium. And then uh, we use, uh, we, you know, remove the contrast media or the poison in a way um, out of the blood before we return it to the body. So this way, you know, we're not going after the effect. Like, you know, we 
we remove the contrast media before we just the kidneys, right? We're not just drawing after the blood. You know, already get it in the list of the body and then like, you know, go back after that. So so that's uh, what the revolution or the, the innovation of what we do. So here is what how our device works. Like again, this is the same picture that just to show you, like the mind, you know, what the uh, what the angiogram look like. So when people do like stent angioplasty, so like you know, they have to put the stent uh, the catheter on the atrial side. Like the yellow um, here, let me say, is the uh, contrast media. So the contrast media would get into the heart, and then, like you know, then we can snap a picture look like that, and then. With our other bodies, um, the, uh, the contrast will go out to the rest of the body and then injure the kidney. So think about this, that this room has the heart muscle, right? And we have bad characters that sort of happen to be in this room. Would you rather catch it, like, but, but this room has only one exit. Would you rather catch it at the door before the bad character go out, or you would rather have, it, have them go out and then go chase after them? And that's exactly how our technology works. So luckily, with the heart muscle, that's a structure of the vessel that talk through sinus, which is kind of like a big doll like this. You know, that all of the blood that supply, and all of the blood that's coming back, will have to go to this door. And that's where we put our center in there. So once we, we have the clinical thing, it's a model of producing block, you know, effectively block the flow, and then we get the blood into our system. And then this is actually not our device. This is the uh, already existing clinical device in any hospital. Actually, the doctor who gave me this idea about using this uh, technology is actually that Massot uh, Hospital, which is like, you know, you know, it's like northwestern part of Thailand. Uh, so meaning that like our technology is very simple. Um, even though we think it's revolutionary, we already patent this too, patent both like the capital design and the configuration. But the real products that we are working on is only the categories. Therefore, it can get to the market very quickly. And um, in terms of investment, it will be a low risk investment because we don't have to invest in the unknown technology. We invest in the known technology, but for different purpose. Um, and again, by doing this, and, and again, like, you know, as the blood comes out here, it's clean, right? And then that's when we return the blood to the body. So again, the main thing that we excited about this simple but significant approach is that it can catch the uh, what actually be bad for your kidney before it gets to the kidney. And that's the key word before. Um, so, um, we just asked for the most serious slide, so the list of this is actually kind of walk in the garden. Um, so anyway, uh, this is uh, the work, like the catheter, balloon, it looks like that. It looks simple, but uh, but we actually put a lot of work into that. We actually have designed this work with the University of Minnesota this summer. Um, we, they have the uh, cadaver lab, like they have heart, human hearts. So these catheter designs using input from 27 human hearts. So with pretty confidence with this design, the key character, we didn't see much of the variation. So even though it's from cadaver, we think that we should be able to get into critical trials pretty straight forward. Um, this is actually the team from CD Ra. You know, um, actually one of our team members is sitting right here. Um, and then two other, like one medical students and another one is the medical um, staff at CD Ra. Um, and we have a partnership with, the, uh, that's a micro CT, it's actually not for human use, but it's for industry, but we have access to that. Um, and also, this is uh, last but not least, um, so the, the previous camera looked like a prototype, but now we actually get into a product design, like I said, that it's a very simple technology, so it's not like AI or something that has to go to a lot of development. Uh, this is really boring technology, to be honest, but, but it's made the impact, right? Innovation is not about fancy technology, it's about solving real problems. And so right now, we get into product design, we get into a user interface, like, you know. Um, and also, like I said, that we actually don't plan on developing our own technology for removing contrast media because it's already out there. And if we have to do that, that would be a really huge investment. So we think it's a pretty clever uh, strategy that, like you know, we leverage what already out there and just fill in the blank of what what missing. 
Um, so, but nonetheless, we still have to do some research. And this is our research team at CERA. Uh, this is the work done at CERA. Um, that we start looking at like the characteristic of the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, what we call blood purification, but we want to say it's called hemodiffusion. Um, so all it is is just the uh, absorbance that, you know, I saw like from mass media. Um, uh, is being used a lot during COVID time because, like, that's kind of the same thing that they use to absorb like inflammatory response from the blood. Um, so, uh, well, this is actually my first thing, the last slide is that, um, it's kind of like a lead cap, the real picture. I've been talking more about technology, but now I want to bring you to what really happens. The patient come in with the severe heart and kidney. Actually, we have one patient who um, uh, actually um, is from the same uh, doctor, so my close friend at Mass Hall. Um, you know, he's actually not a cardiologist, not a heart doctor, he's a kidney doctor. He has one patient that um, uh, have a bad kidneys and also have a bad heart. And he said that, like, you know, his kidney is not going to improve if the heart is not going to improve. So he asked the cardiologist to do that, to do that procedure. And he did it. And luckily for that patient, uh, that ended up to be this patient, the good outcome, the kidney infiltration improved from the score that I got, less than 20 to more than 30. So that's a very good story. However, that's not all luck. Right. The second case here is in the patients actually in the local hospital in Bantu. Uh, the patient is the same thing, but unfortunately, it came out like three days uh, after the uh, procedure. The, uh, the heart was good, but the kidney was bad, and then it went downhill. The patient died within a month. So because of that, when we have a patient with um, severe heart and kidney like that coming in, it's a big dilemma. What are you going to do? Of course, we want all that, but there aren't this. So as a result, two-thirds of these patients get turned down. Well, when we make this, it's going to be clear. It's not like doctors say that you're going to do this, you're going to do that. It's going to be a joint decision. Actually, it's going to be a patient decision, right? With the doctors. Obviously, a lot of times, the patient would test the doctor. So it's a very big dilemma. It's very frustrating. It's like, you know, which way you imagine if it's going loved one, like what we're going to do if you don't do anything like this, the patient will not going to get better. This is not a condition will get better by itself. It will get worsened, and then finally it will die. The patient will die anyway. That's why that second patient that we're talking about um, that decided to do it because the quality of life is really nothing left for the patient. But if you do that, then obviously you have that risk. So the goal of a nerve man is actually to bring this patient back to that. That means that we want the patient to have, we want to flip this, right? Rather than one, only one third get the treatment that they deserve. We want to be two thirds, you know, rather than one third. And also we want this to be even less. So imagine that how much that we can actually impact patient life worldwide. And like I always said in other uh, forum that I have a chance to talk, that medtech or in medical innovations is actually global by nature. We don't have to move just in Thailand. We can actually, because everything we talk here is the same as in the US and China or anywhere else in the world, right? It's nothing different. If it proved to work here in Thailand, it also work in the US as well. So, and the US is a larger market. Uh, why not aim for that right away? And the fact here, and I didn't have a slide for this one, I want to say this, I still have a couple minutes left, is that when we look at the PCR, uh, green PCR is the nickname for stents, right? Um, Shopping case only constitute um, 10% of the whole procedures, majority 90% or so um, is simple case. But would you be surprised if I tell you that? that 10% is actually translated into 40% market share of the PCR. Imagine, now we're talking about money, of course, like patient is still out of concern, but money is important. Um, if we can actually take half of this group into that group, and this is what play case, how much economic impact is going to win, right? So, so the fact that what we're doing is actually not preventing 
this, but it's actually about enabling this to be that. To make the case that they don't have an ECI today, that they can do ECI, and that also would have um, in metrics, our business model is on that in the end, we want strategic partners like, you know, Medtronic, also Scientific, and those uh, Asashi, those big names to employ us. So Medtech is not that we want to be a central company, you know, we're going to be, be looking more for like an acquisition that more like an exit strategy. And because of this device, which actually by, by itself is, uh, yes, it has a market about $200 million in the US market. But we think it's actually going to increase the uh, uh, the software PCI market by a billion dollars. So that's actually given much bigger economic impact of this of our technology. Um, so with that, we think. Um, well, I actually wasn't know that it was. I didn't know that it was a pitching, but uh, so I didn't. I removed the pitching now. But anyway, so um, here as uh, my ending pitching note is that. Um, you know, we, we think that this is a good opportunity as the, um, and we are raising money too as well right now, um, that not only that we have the, the very good size of the market, but um, we also have a very big impact on the other uh, product portfolios. So last thing I want to say that um, this patient are pretty much is probably dramatic. And at first, when we think about it, we bring this uh, statement up, we all felt like it was too long, too, too strong. But after talking to the doctors, we actually take care of this patient, they all agree with this. These patients all do not have much hope. The patients were actually found with bad kidneys, like their quality of life is really not much left. Um, so we are giving hope that not much that they have right now. Thank you very much.